Both of these toys have their torsos stuck in the 1980s. Popular science depictions of Quetzalcoatlus in that period, pterosaurs generally, really, had these like broad almond-shaped or pancake torsos, whereas it should be much more of a compact capsule. Now, weirdly, despite this toy's broad pancake, you can actually see through the fuzz and the muscle where the shoulders are articulating with the spine, which doesn't make any sense. The shoulders were probably the widest point of the torso. This toy has the humor eye both extremely under-muscled and also seemingly articulating with the spine. In actuality, there was a hoop of bones girding the torso, consisting of the Christospine, which is the crest on the bottom of the front of the breastbone, the coracoids, and the shoulder blades, and the notarium. This is the load-bearing fusion of vertebrae neural spines, where the shoulder blades meet. It's sort of like a sacrum, but for the shoulder. It also shows up in birds. But this hoop, the pectoral girdle, ensures that the torso can take the stresses of flight without crumpling. And the two halves of that hoop actually hinge. The scapulae have this rounded tip where they articulate with the notarium, and the coracoids have this, like, saddle joint that fits onto the Christospine. The point is, the whole thing can move a little bit, even when it's packed with muscle, which would probably restrict that movement. They have muscles running from the neck to the shoulder blade, a lot like ours, and obviously they have their flight muscles, being flying animals. Overall, it had about 10 degrees of range of motion, and could have been one way that the animal controls its pitch stability. 